Okay, I cycled water through here just to get us some fresh water for the few fish that are left here. And now I've got extra water. What do I do with extra water? I'm Justin Hitt from Prosperity Homestead. What I got here is a pump with a float on it. Drop it in there, the pump turns on. Now we're gonna put in this other tank here. But look what happens. The pump drains into our swale. Now I was hand watering some bulbs that went in here. Scott put a whole bunch of bulbs in here. And I also put in some onions down here. So but I'm simply gonna drain this bottom out. Now that I cycled through some fresh water, I'm gonna drain this bottom one out so that I can put this larger one in place after leveling that platform. But you can kind of see what happens. When we get natural overflow, we'll drain into this little ditch. And that ditch will come down here into a swale in front of this bed. It's kind of hand dug, it's not really that deep. But when we drain the, the overall tank, by the way, look at this work they've been doing here. Got a nice path going on here. They've got tomato plants in here already. This is a chop and drop. And look, I'm gonna go ahead and just walk in the water here. But you can see that the water is gonna basically fill this basin. And yes, it will get muddy, but we're not gonna really walk in it. Um, I'm just gonna drain this out. And I am kind of making a little bit of mud. I don't need to be doing that. But ultimately, it's gonna fill this basin up, fill this basin up, and that'll soak into the ground. Now, could I, could I spray it on the beds over here? Sure, I could water the plants with it. I could spray it over everything else. But again, I'm simply gonna just drain this out to get to the next step of the process here. Now, you can see there's a little bump. So this water should stop up at the top edge. And there was a ditch there that filled in. But here are the tomatoes. These are Egyptian walking onions. Tomatoes were up the hill there with flags. These are Egyptian walking onions that I watered in down here and mulched again. Now it looks like there's nothing there. You can't see the plants. That's exactly what will happen when a deer comes in here, which he shouldn't. There's a big fence around it, but a deer, a raccoon, whatever comes in here, they're not going to see what's what's in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and and dig this little bump here. This bump is basically the indicator that this area above us is level. And we're essentially draining the water from the pond in here, from the little pond demonstration. And you can see how it spreads and soaks. Now when this is filled with mulch, it'll actually work as like a water battery and store a lot of that moisture. But you can already see, uh, I guess I watered over it, but you can already see that there's moisture in these raised beds. These are permanent raised beds with contoured paths in between them. And I'm simply gonna just take the water out of the bottom there to use for uh, just to water this all out. But you can see how the water's spreading and soaking. Now, if this is normal rainwater, we'll get an inch or two of water in here. But again, I'm using a pump to get it out, so I'll make it a little bit of mud. The extra cover crop and, and water and you know, nothing's gonna get wasted. The extra water, if it falls in here, and you can see I'm making a muddy little mess, which is fine. The extra water is gonna get sucked up by these cover crops, stored in the beds, stored in the ground underneath me. And look at that. Oh, is that a bulb? Just plant some bulbs. Look at that, I just put this over here. Put some soil on it. Anyway, these things will get filled out. Now, I did have a ditch here. I'll clean this ditch up but it was kind of uh, to level the water out. It'll fill this whole length here, about a half inch at the most. And that'll soak into the ground. The path is walkable. You know, I don't want it to get muddy, but it, you know, you can still walk in it. But again, when we get the mulch in place, it'll be beautiful like this. Look at these things. Look at this mulch path down here. This is soil building. And then you can see mulch in the beds. Now you might be asking, well, what about all this grass? You know, doesn't get away. Now it protects the soil. See, these are peppers right here. And as we cut it, we can mulch around the plants as they mature. It gives us a better, um, better control of the moisture. We don't lose as much moisture, but there's also hairy vetch, clover, uh, various uh, types of greens, uh, annual rye. Oh, look at it, he got all the way down here too. This looks great. And then of course you can walk around the garden on these little paths, little footpaths and just simply chop and drop the materials around it. And we'll end up with both biomass under the ground 
and biomass above the ground. And just look how beautiful this is. Now the paths are a little grown over, that's okay. I know you feel compelled to till all this under, but again, it is biomass above the ground, biomass below the ground, and it is an alternative to what usually happens when you just simply till. And these beds are cover cropped later, but you can see what they look like before. They had nothing on the surface of them, except a little bit of material, a little bit of straw that got blown around. Again, what would you rather have? Green abundance in a field like this? or scrap scrub now of course this scrub is going to grow out we have some other plants in here the scrub is going to grow out and we'll get a nice little little um bed in here just like the top but we're essentially growing our mulch in place okay and i've been eating all these little greens that are in here too you can see some greens but we are essentially growing our mulch in place it's only going to work for the first couple of years once these beds are good and, and mulched over there, nothing's going to grow on them except for the plants we put in it. Now we could grow in the paths. We could actually till the paths towards the winter, put cover crops in the paths, and then cut those out next season. We could put old bales of straw down. We could have potatoes. See how wide this path is here? It doesn't need to be that wide. We could actually plant potatoes all down this row and then uh, turn them over as we go. These wider beds down the bottom where we have a, a little more level uh, area, these wider beds will actually become keyhole gardens. So we'll take advantage of the level, the level space and still have access to double reach beds. And I told, I told Scott, we could just start dumping manures and stuff in the, in the idle beds or layering it on the idle beds. Because again, all these cover crops, when they grow, are gonna create a good density of biomass. Let me go check on what's going on here. And you can see, okay, we're still running water but you can see how much water is now stored in the contour path. And these are 100 gallon tanks. We're storing quite a bit in those paths. And it's all fish water, so it's nutrient rich. And there you go. Now it's starting to overflow an area I don't want, so I'm gonna wrap it up, clean that little bit area up and get back to work. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead over here working at the Sustainable Homestead Institute, the premier center here in, in Henry County, Virginia, for permaculture education, for survival schools, ran by Scott Vernon. You gotta visit them at sustainablehomesteadinstitute.com and I'm at prosperityhomestead.org. Thanks for watching.